by the long story short. Last week, we looked at the story of Samuel, just a small portion of Samuel's story, and um, we learned about like one of those first stepping stone moments on his journey with God. And it was when he was faced with a situation where it may have been pretty difficult for him to be able to come to accepting of truth and being able to listen fully and um, hearing what God has to say to him and being able to hear in those quiet moments, like when he was woken up in the middle of the night hearing God calling his name. So that was last week for week four. Today, we are staying in the book of 1 Samuel. We are staying put and we are moving on a little bit further in, in time, fast forwarding a few, quite a few years. And we are going to be talking about two people today. We're gonna to touch a little bit more with Samuel, but our two main people that we're gonna be talking about are King Saul and David. So we're gonna talk a little bit about where, what's going on. So King Saul was the king um, at the time and he was a great king he was it he um, he led a bunch of armies and they um, Samuel talked to him on behalf of God so remember how we said last week that Samuel was a prophet and so what a prophet does is they hear what God is saying and they tell it to other people which is what he did with Eli last week so this week, we're talking about how Samuel did that with Saul. God had a plan for Saul's armies, and Samuel would tell him, you need to take your armies and you need to go here, and you need to do this, this, this. And it was sometimes it was pretty specific, and Saul would do it. So Samuel was getting quite old, and he was, he was looking. Uh, God was telling him, you know, you need to find someone who's going to take over one day and who's going to be the next person after you to to relay these messages so god said you need to find you need to go to this family and you need to go and you need to select the person and i will show you who so he goes through all of these brothers there's seven brothers and none of them samuel is like no these are not the, none of those people are the right person. So then he comes to David. David was the youngest and the smallest of all the brothers, of all eight of these men. And, well, David was still young at this time. He was, he was quite young. And so all of these brothers weren't the person. And then he found David. And David was that person. So that's how we start to find out about David. We're going to go back to Saul for a minute, though. So Saul, he, sometimes he would get distressed about some of the things that Samuel and God were telling him to do. And when he would fight with these, with these thoughts and figure out what he had to do, he, he enjoyed listening to music. So he was trying to find a musician who could play this specific instrument called a lyre. And David happened to be able to play it. So King Saul called David into the palace to play for him. And eventually Saul says, I'd like you to continue serving for me full time. Stay here at the palace and work for me. So that's what David did. David worked for the king and he played his instrument. But what he also did was he went back and forth to his family's, to his father's home so that way he could keep being a shepherd as well. So anyways, time goes on. And uh, King Saul's army is faced against the Philistines. Now, I'm sure you all know the story of Goliath. Well, this is that David. David, this little guy, kills Goliath, knocks him to the ground with one smooth stone. And after that, David is, is so revered and so acknowledged. And then King Saul really really likes him he's very fond of David he's a good he's a good worker he's obedient he's he's nice and so King Saul ends up making him one of his army leaders 
and David leads these one these great missions, these these army expeditions. But Saul starts getting a little worried at some point. And he starts getting a little anxious and he thinks that David might try to overcome him and overtake him and try to take his throne possibly. So Saul there's a couple times there's this one time where Saul tries to kill David because he's just so he's wrestling so much with his thoughts about David and then there's another time where David tries to go after him so there's a bit of a feud at this point these two aren't quite getting along anymore what Pastor Pat is going to talk about today is the second time King Saul tries to kill David So now we have a little bit of a lead up into what's going to happen in this story. So I want you to use that and I want you to remember how this progressed. At first, King Saul loved David and David was a wonderful worker for him. But then as he started growing and becoming more knowledgeable and he was a very good person, Saul became a little fearful. But there's another part to the story too as to why Saul started getting this way. There was a point where, like I had said before, Samuel was leading King Saul in all of these, all of these things that God wanted Saul to do. God used King Saul in amazing ways to, to grow his kingdom. And he was obedient, but Remember when we talked about Adam and Eve and we said how one act of disobedience can have severe consequences? Well, that's what happened with King Saul. King Saul ended up disobeying God on one of these one of these things that God told him to do. And because of that, it changed the dynamic between God and Saul. And God wasn't happy with King Saul. And so because of that, things were starting to be passed on and other, and other jobs and roles were starting to be mixed around because God didn't use Saul in the same way that he once did. And this is one of those consequences that Saul had because he disobeyed God. And so because of this, he had fear and he had a little bit, I would say, jealousy towards David because he didn't want, he wanted to keep his power, but he was also wanting to have that relationship with God back. But because of his consequences, God had, the Bible says God dismissed him. And so King Saul ended up having a mind change in a little bit because of this. And that's one of the leading reasons why Saul isn't quite happy about the David situation. So We're going to pause our story there, and we're going to continue with Pastor Pat in a few minutes. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pray for you guys, and then we're going to get right into the service, okay? So that's the background story. It's it's kind of a lesson, but it's getting you to the point that we're going to talk about in the the main service today. So I hope that that kind of gives you a good lead up as to where we're going to take off. So let's pray, and then we're going to get to our service. Dear God, thank you so much for all of these lessons and for all of these teachings that you give us and that we can learn off of people's mistakes, people's achievements, people's, you know, all of your people that you give us in the Bible, we can learn from and we can take um, their experiences and we can grow from them ourselves. And I thank you for the opportunity that that brings us. So that way we don't have to make the same mistakes and we can just grow closer with you, God. And I thank you for um, everything that you're doing around us in our community, in, in Waynefleet, in Welland, in Niagara Falls, in Port Colburn, all around us, God. And I thank you so much for being with us and for giving us grace and hope and love. And I ask that you keep us all safe this upcoming week And I pray that um, the message that Pastor Pat has planned will be, um, we will be able to hear it and understand it, and we'll be able to learn another story in your word, the Bible. 
and we thank you for everything and we love you in Jesus name amen okay guys so that's week five and we will see you next week <laughs>